Can you hear me? All right. Looking forward to unpacking this topic with you. Um, you, you can hear me. All right, sweet. Let's get going. OK, so Hollywood has always been politically active. But then again, people in general are politically active and have strong opinions on hot button issues. Be um, we cannot blame people in Hollywood for voicing their opinions because it is their First Amendment right to do so. So for this debate, I will not be arguing for any policy keeping Hollywood out of politics or even that they are morally wrong to do so. Neither of these arguments hold much ground and I don't really believe them. My point is that when Hollywood becomes politically active in movies or shows or anything, their ratings tend to drop. So it is unwise for them to push agendas if they want to remain profitable. Let's look at this summer's box office profits, a measure, a measly $3.8 which is the lowest profits Hollywood, seen in, Hollywood has seen in at least 10 years, and it is the lowest summer box office attendance since 1992, 25 years ago. Another shining example would be both the 2016 and 2017 Emmys. Averaging around 11.35 million views, these ratings are down 5% from the 2015 showing and down 10% from the 2014. It is clear to me that people are watching movies and TVs less and less. But the question is why? I believe, and I will lay out the argument for, that it is due to the forced political agendas and needless diversity in casting are simply tired of. The average American watches TV or goes to the movies to get away from things like work and politics. When Hollywood chooses to poison entertainment with their own political agendas, people are going to stop watching, and the group that will suffer the most in the end is Hollywood. So my main argument for here that I'm going to lay out is that I believe that when Hollywood becomes more and more politically active, no matter what side it's on, people who come to entertainment simply want to get away from politics. So from a business standpoint, I believe that it is unwise for them, so they should stay out of politics if they want to continue being a profitable industry. And I'm going to pass the mic. All right. Uh, that's a really interesting take on this. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to debating this topic myself. Um, the main points that the pro made in his case were not supposedly a political or a policy proposal or a value proposal, but he is making a business proposal, essentially. So we have to view that in terms of what he's what he's trying to portray here. Is there any solid evidence for the fact that having more political movies decreases people's participation in Hollywood? Well, I would argue that historically that's disproven by some of the greatest movies of all time. You can look at the IMDb Top 250 or the Criterion Collection. Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, a classic. Uh, I think both parties uh, right now could agree that it's a great movie. Uh, also, All the President's Men, maybe that might be a little slanted against Richard Nixon, but then again, who cares? Uh, Wag the Dog, obviously that was a critique of the, uh, the Clinton presidency, and Dr. Strangelove, one of my personal favorites, a Stanley Kubrick classic. Now, not only were these movies all pretty much box office successes, but they're considered American classics. I could go on, the list does continue, but there's no necessary correlation between the political nature of a movie and its appeal to people. Now, if it happens to correspond to a feeling at the time, then that would bring people in. If there's some sort of, uh, you know, zeitgeist, as you would have it, and the movie happens to correspond to this political identity that exists at the time, then it might appeal to that. But my opponent is going to have a hard time proving that just having a movie be political is going to predict box office failure or success. There have been plenty of political movies that have succeeded. I also want to point out that the decreasing profits in the movie industry are due to the fact that, number one, we can watch those movies at home on giant HD uh, screens that are cheaper than they've ever been, and we can get pretty much anything we want streamed to our house. That's the number one reason why their profits are down. It's not because people don't want to watch movies. It's because they don't want to go to the theaters anymore. That's an outmoded means of thinking about it. Not to mention the prevalency of movie pirating, which that's a huge elephant in the room, but we have to discuss that impact on the entertainment industry as a whole. I also think that my opponent needs to establish a bright line between Hollywood or the film industry and the television industry. They're both intermarried. They both have 
mutual ownership of different things. And there's plenty of political stuff going on on TV that certainly isn't decreasing their ratings. We can talk about the news even as an entertainment, not an information vector there. So I think that there's going to be a tough time identifying some sort of problem as far as profits are concerned for politicizing the content, whether it be in movies or on TV or even in media forms such as YouTube or Netflix. Uh, they just appeal to a particular audience and they know their demographic. These people know what they're doing. It's a huge industry that works. Okay, so the thing that I think my opponent has kind of missed my line of argument. My main line of argument is not that political movies or that um, politics that are like this movie was made for political statements i'm not saying that those are going to be unsuccessful i'm talking about movies that are designed for pure entertainment that have heavy political influences um or pushing political agendas so let's look at um things like the ghostbusters movie the forced all-female cast and the force the forcing of um a lot of um, feminist ideals. It wasn't necessarily that people disagreed with those ideals that they flopped. People just didn't want to see an all-female Ghostbusters movie. They didn't want to see it, and it was clear that Hollywood made that movie for largely political reasons to kind of push an agenda of like, look, we can make an all-female cast for this movie. It wasn't that there was a large demand, and actually that movie, I have its um, ratings right here. Um, they spent five 450 to 500 million dollars in production and advertising that movie but they only made a measly 160 million it is clear that things like that lose money so my line of argument is not hey they made this political movie that was like intentionally like political like um the movies my opponent has listed um my line of argument is with non-political movies that push political agendas so um, getting to TV and things like that, he says that ratings aren't dropping with TV. Um, let's look at late night TV hosts that are comedians that have largely be got, gotten political. Um, I have it right here that um, the, uh, as of October 3rd, the ratings of the late night hosts of ABC, CBS, and NBC barely cracked um, 8 million the week during that week. Jay Leno used to do that by himself. It is clear that people are turning out of um, largely comedy late night shows because they're getting largely political. People don't tune into comedy shows to learn about politics. They wanted to watch the late night comedy show to laugh and be lighthearted and get away from things like that. So the large, my, my opponent has kind of missed my argument is not that like political movies cannot be unsuccessful. My main point is that when they make something that was originally intended to be non-political or just purely for entertainment and they make those things political, people are going to tune away from it. I'll pass it back to you. Well, I, I don't know about you, but I went to go see the Ghostbusters movie. And I mean, that's purely anecdotal evidence. It might have been a box office flop, but plenty of great movies have also been box office flops. Uh, my point here is that uh, you've got no standard or bright line for what political is. So you say that these great movies like Mr. Smith Goes to Washington are somehow excluded from your criteria, but you don't actually give us any sort of standard for what is too political for Hollywood. I mean, is it political if a movie like The Avengers features a predominantly Amero-centric or Western-centric viewpoint? It could definitely be perceived that way by some people. Could the exclusion of black actors from certain roles or women from certain roles be perceived as political? Well, it certainly could. This is a discussion that needs to take place and needs to continue to take place. But the fact that Hollywood would refuse to portray these certain things doesn't mean that they're failures. Uh, it just means that Hollywood is testing this proving ground to see what the demographic is. They probably went over budget on the Ghosters, Ghostbusters movie, but every single movie is a huge initial outlay. They're a huge risk. That's why there's all these infamous box office flops that turn into cult classics or turn into international hits. It's because really the movie industry is always taking a risk by putting out some sort of narrative. Uh, every narrative has certain political dimensions to it. And if you take a film theory class or you take a literary studies class, then it will be obvious that we can apply political narratives to any of these political or any of these uh, entertainment type uh, industry productions. Now, I think that's really important to consider because if those people 
are discouraged or if we consider the aspect that they might somehow fail by producing movies that have these in them, well, that's empirically denied by the fact that there have been unpopular movies or movies about unpopular subjects that have turned into great hits. Also, profits are not the only uh, measure of what Hollywood should do. They should not feel compelled just by the profit margin. They should also be making movies that are meaningful to people, that connect to people, that give meaning to their cause. That's why they make LGBTQ movies that are low production costs to appeal to that community, even though they're not willing to take the risk yet to appeal to the rest of the American public. It's an issue of how much they're willing to invest in that, and that's a business question. You don't want to make this a values debate. You don't want to make this a policy debate. We're talking pure numbers here, and there's no empirical evidence to support that the politicization of movies or of the entertainment industry is decreasing the ratings. You give one example of that, which is late night movies or late night talk show hosts, but you completely ignore my argument about the fact that the news media is in essence a part of the entertainment industry and they make all of their money off of this. There are ways to use this stuff to make money or to be successful and that shouldn't be the only metric anyway. So I'm not sure what you're going for. Okay, so again, let me let me address since you said that I missed it. I don't want you to feel like I'm avoiding your points. So with with news media, people are tuning in to news to hear about politics. That's what they want. People, it's like if I went to a coffee shop and I went there to buy coffee. That's what I want. I want coffee. I don't want a burger. I want coffee. So to make the analogy to this, people are going to this coffee shop. Let's just do the analogy to entertainment. I'm going to watch this like Avengers flick, as, as, you, as you mentioned. I'm not going to the Avengers flick to see some alteration on diverse cast or some any kind of political statement. I don't really care either way. I don't care if it's right or left. I'm not watching it to hear some political statement. I'm watching it to see superheroes kick butt and do cool things. So... When I get, if I got a huge political statement or a huge political push, I feel like I have been gypped out of my purchase because I didn't want the burger. I wanted the coffee. So that is my main line of argument is that in, people who are coming for entertainment, non-political entertainment, and they're getting political agendas in with that entertainment are dissatisfied with their purchase. And so from a business standpoint, if you want to make a political movie, that's fine because you're going to go gear towards a political crowd. But if you're making what is perceived to be an apolitical movie and purely entertainment movie and you make it political, people are going to feel gypped out of their purchase and ratings have dropped. And he says that I haven't proven it, but empirically like these ratings and movies are dropping and like late nights are dropping, Emmy ratings are dropping, and you're noticing an increase in put in in pushing of politics, especially during Trump's administration. Now, whether or not that that's a causation, there's a clear correlation of increase in politics with a um, with a decrease in ratings. People are just tired of it. Um, and I know this is anecdotal, but like I talk to people all over and it doesn't matter whether they're right or they're left. They're like, can we please get past Meryl Streep and Alex ba and Alec Baldwin and everyone just like bashing a Trump all the time. People are just kind of tired of this kind of political statements. And so whether or not, I'm not saying that they shouldn't have these opinions. I'm not saying that it's wrong for them. And I'm not even saying it's damaging America. I'm saying the people who are coming to purchase and watch movies are doing it less and less because they're not getting what they feel like they're paying for. So I'm going to, I'm going to pass it back to you. Okay, well, I'm just going to address uh, the individual arguments that you just made there. Um, first, you made the argument that people tune into the news to hear about news. Well, there's a here's a question here, which just expands the scope of the argument even more. What is news? Is it um, stories about lifestyle? Is it a cute old lady who somehow her Alzheimer's went away because she tried an experimental treatment? Is it sports? Is it technology? Is it business? Uh, is it entertainment stories? Because yes, that is part of the news cycle. They talk all about celebrity news. So you can't really form this false uh, dichotomy between the two, especially when we have the current sitting president who seems more interested in creating entertainment himself than conducting policy. Uh, I would actually pose the, uh, the converse of this resolution just for your consideration, which is that Washington should stay out of entertainment and get back to work. 
the, the real problem nowadays is not that people have an issue with the politicization of movies. They have an issue with the politicization of the dialogue that's happening on the national scene. And that's not a product of the media. That's the product of the political system. I mean, you really can't. And you also can't argue that people aren't going to these movies. You've still only provided one example on the movie side and one example on the late night side. So, I mean, and even if you provide a whole number of examples, the fact of the matter is there, you admitted yourself that this is just a correlation. You've completely discounted the fact that there is piracy going on, which is reducing the number of movies that are being sold, and also that there are profits through their theaters, which are mostly owned by the movie studios themselves or shell corporations, are also having diminished attendance because people want to stay at home on their comfy couch and they can watch whatever movies they want to on their big screen. You haven't dealt with that problem at all. The fact is that there's complicating issues here. There is absolutely no relationship between this politicization of movies that you claim, which hasn't even been shown, and the decrease in profits that you claim. I'm not even going to argue whether or not profits or ratings are going up or down, but I am going to say that you don't have a fundamental correlation there because there's too many variables involved. Uh, and especially in, when you keep in mind the fact that all of these political movies, like stuff that came out in the 60s, that was considered unpopular and too politically controversial, is now once again considered a classic, which means that profit is not the only metric that we can use in this debate. I'm going to keep reiterating this. Uh, it's, it's a highly preferred metric in an art form such as film that it be meaningful to people and that it carries some sort of message that lasts across the generations. I'm talking about things like these great movies. They might have had controversial messages at the time that they came out, but still mean something today. Uh, not to mention the fact that we do have, uh, we do still have a very free and open democratic system. So there's room for things to shift. Okay, so you, you, I have a great um, thing that I would like to hear your response to on the causation. So Marvel has been, um, even though their movies have been doing really great, their Avengers and things have been doing really great. Their comics have been plummeting really lately. Um, and one of their executives was in an interview and he was asked, why does he think that their comics are plummeting? Um, and he said, what we heard from retailers was that people don't want any more diversity. They didn't want more female characters out there. That's what we heard. Whether we believe that or not, I don't know. I don't know. But that's what we saw in sales. We saw that sales of a character that was diverse, sales of a character that was new or um, female characters or anything that was not a core Marvel character, people were turning their nose up against. Um and he said, this has been difficult because we have a lot of new and fresh, exciting ideas that we're trying to get out and nothing has been really working. So um, a lot of people have written articles that people are tired of changing the alternative. There's been a new black female Iron Man. Well, people don't tune in to watch Iron Man because it's new and black and female. People tune in because it's Iron Man. People don't like to see their um, characters change. There's been a female Thor that's been pushed in the comics and the um, possible movies have been scrapped for that. So just there's there's a push of like, okay, these things aren't going to be successful. So yes, um, I can actually prove that there's a causation because one of the biggest companies that is pushing for has been pushing for this diversity has been failing at it and they've moved away from it because they're like, this is a bad business move. So whether or not it's good, whether or not it's meaningful, I'm talking about it is a wise business decision. And these ratings have been dropping. And to your point of people attending movies um, less and less because of piracy. Piracy has been around for years and years. And it generally hasn't affected the movie industry a whole lot significantly. And I'd like to see you empirically prove that. But as of late, AMC stock has been dropping increasingly with the past year. Um, it is currently down 1.75% um, and it's continuing to plummet. Um, but that's, it's been recently. It has not been over the course of piracy came up and then instantly you saw a drop in movie attendance. People are always going to be wanting to attend movies. Um, so that's just, that's one of the things for me. I'm, I'm really interested to hear your opinion on the, on the Marvel issue as well. Um, well, I think the Marvel issue, I will get to that immediately. The Marvel issue is a really interesting one because you pointed out that the comic plummeting, but the comic book demographic generally has been white middle class males. 
Um, so it's not really surprising that that demographic did not respond very well to the attempt to diversify that market. Um, this is the same issue I was talking about before. You have to know your demographics. It's not that the movie industry should stop making these movies. It's that they should appropriately tune the movie to the demographic. They should appropriately allocate the amount of resources in the beginning to what their box office revenue is going to be. As I said, it's an unpredictable industry. There's lots of historical examples where movies have been big up box office flops. Um, and in a lot of instances, it's not even because they're political. It's just because they shelled out too much money or they ended up with three different directors because they, the directors kept quitting or whatever. There's all sorts of reasons why a movie can be a box office failure that have nothing to do with the political nature of the movie. I also want to point out that my uh, opponent's version of what is political about movies seems to be centered on um, – uh, multicultural characters and women. Um, and I'm not really going to um, touch that one right there, but I think there's far more dimensions to politics than simply the effect of feminism on the movie industry or how many black Thors there are or whatever he's trying to get at here. Um, that's not a huge political um, problem for people until they make it a political problem. Um, and I mean, personally, it sounds like those arguments are coming from a particular demographic and a particular perspective. And I respect that that's your perspective, but it doesn't represent the whole of America. Some of us want to see these kinds of movies. Some of us like watching the, the cult classics, the low budget indies that do have some sort of message, but maybe don't appeal to all the rest of the population. I mean, it's a diversifying market and it's also shifting nowadays because of the effect of the internet. Now you claim that there isn't any link between movie piracy and the effects on the movie industry, but Forbes.com indicated in an article on March 6th of 2013 that the loss of revenue is of concern to networks and film company masters because it is illegal and it cuts into their profits and it's virtually unstoppable. There's nothing they can do to stop the flow of piracy. I've pirated stuff before. I'm sure you probably have before. And probably a lot of people watching this have pirated things before. It's not something that's a minimal effect that nobody knows about. It has a real effect on those profits. And you can't just wave your hand and make it go away. You still haven't proven a link between whatever this politicization is. Uh, I think it's a limited definition of politicization and decreased movie or TV uh, ratings. Okay, so first of all, you said um, comic books are um, pretty much like the middle class white uh, white male. Um, not if I was correct on saying that. Um, I don't want to misrepresent you. Um, 46% of comic books are female. So while it's a majority male, the female is a, a pretty big demographic in there. So I could definitely see why they would want to see it. But they've been dropping past that point so even female comic book people are turning away from it so like that's a big thing um also with the piracy i did not say that there was no link i said there was no significant link and that's that's an important thing like i agree there is a link like it's just purely logical like piracy goes up people are going to want to watch a little bit of movies but they're still making billions upon billions of dollars and so it's clear that they're making money it's not like movies are going away because of this so that's a big point with this um and then you also talked about how um i think you, you almost agreed with my point in a little bit i think and I, I could be wrong but you kind of agree with me in it of like they should optimize these to fit their demographics and like these little indie films that have political statements that's great i have no problem with that and again i don't really have a huge problem with movies that make these decisions i'm simply saying that financially movies like that tend to suffer a little more because the mass majority of people don't want to come and watch a movie that they came for entertainment they didn't come for a political statement i'm not talking about movies that um are purely political i'm talking about movies that are made for just entertainment purposes like your avengers and your other movies like that that's what i'm talking about when you politicize those movies people don't want to come watch them because kind of the wolf in sheep's clothing analogy of like i'm coming to watch this movie but i'm actually getting the wolf um also you mentioned earlier and i'm sorry it took me so long to get back to this but the highest grossing movies of all time um 
the none of the movies that you listed are, are even in the top 10 number one i can agree is political it's it's gone with the wind but then there's star wars um and then um sound of music could be argued to be political so i'll, I'll definitely grant you that but then there's et there's titanic um 10 commandments jaws um dr zivago the exorcist and snow white and the seven dwarfs none of those movies are hugely political i'm not saying they don't have political undertones um but they're not the purpose of those movies was not to mainly push some sort of agenda so um i could be wrong i can always be wrong but i'm interested to see um your point on those just listing the top 10 most profitable movies doesn't represent how profitable movies are in general i mean that's a very limited representation you conceded that a lot of them do have political undertones my whole point here as it has been through the whole debate is that you can't provide a bright line between what entertainment and politics is they cross over in all sorts of places like tv and maybe the late night talk show hosts have lost some ratings or whatever but you can't get rid of the news media and you also can't show what there is about movies as far as what is political right like you've talked about the fact that they have female characters or that there are multicultural characters well what about movies that were say anti-union like on the waterfront once again a big box office hit an oscar winner maybe not in the top 10 but it was definitely a profitable movie with marlon brando and it was a great movie and once again, you're only limiting this to the profit margin. I will refer back to the fact that the only value of movies is not the profit margin. Now, if they do operate their business properly, then they will make low revenue movies with a lower budget. Sometimes they don't do that properly, but you still haven't proven any causation between them politicizing certain movies and a large scale across the board diminution of ratings, right? Like the Avengers isn't the only movie out there. Female four isn't the only production that's going on. And so what I need you to understand here, man, is that the entire argument that you're making here is based upon some sort of flawed premise that there is a line between entertainment and politics. And you can't just say that a certain political subject is off limits. It can be produced. It can be projected in a certain way. And that's up to the film industry to do that. Um, and you don't have any material standards that people can adhere to as to what makes something too political to go in a movie and not political enough. That's the whole argument here. You haven't told me what is too political because apparently on the waterfront is fine but not the Avengers. So I, I mean, or maybe the Avengers is, I don't know. I'm going to pass the mic. Okay. So I'd love to make this closing statement. Um, you, you can't, you can't keep saying that I haven't proven it when I'm giving you evidence and then call that like I, I've told him he hasn't proved it. Um, my, my main point is not that they can't make the, these um, political things. I'm not trying to say that they, they're not allowed to touch on these political things. My point is that it is not as profitable. So my definition of Hollywood should stay out of politics is that for them to be more and more successful, it is more profitable for them and more successful for them to stay, um, either dedicate themselves to a political video movie or dedicate themselves to an entertaining movie. But when you do that wolf in sheep's clothing of OK, we're going to make this movie um, and then like let's look at the Kingsman, a, a recent movie that came out. Kingsman 2 had some pretty heavy political undertones, but it was if you watch the trailers, it wasn't marketed at all as being a heavily political movie. Um, and the main thing that that movie was about was um, um, decriminalizing drugs and will cure some people. And the president who is clearly kind of intended to be a, a trumped up um, George Bush style Republican was like, no, nah, let all those drug addicts go ahead and die um that it was not only building up a straw man but um having left that movie and i talked to other people who left that movie and it, it is less successful than the first kingsman um they we all felt like this was a good movie it didn't need this political statement it derives it takes away from the entertaining factor of the movie and so my main the main thesis of my argument is that if you want to make a political movie that's fine if you want to make an entertainment movie that's fine 
But I think I've done a pretty good solid job of proving that with a, when they do that wolf and sheep's clothing mixture, they have become less successful th through late night TV ratings dropping, Emmy ratings dropping, and movies grossing overall less and less to a significant rate, less than 1992, which is still before pirating and things like that. So the, even with adjusted for inflation, they made a whole lot less profits even before piracy was a huge thing going on. Okay. So um, basically, uh, my opponent thinks that he's shown you that there is no that the increase in politicization of movies has resulted in decrease in profits. At no point has he dealt with the fact that piracy has been decreasing these, even though he says that in 1992 profits were down. Once again, there's no bright line here. He doesn't provide a standard for what is too political to go into these movies. 1992, what are all the women's roles or the multicultural roles that supposedly would be turning viewers off? There's no bright line for what is too political. And also he admits the fact that this should be a fluid standard. It can be accommodated for. It's not that Hollywood should stay out of politics. It's that they can blend with their entertainment, the politics.